Hey friends, welcome to my daily update video. Happy Boxing Day. If you don't know what Boxing Day is, you're probably not a Brit, but uh, good to have you here in my uh, daily update video. Hey, in a moment, I'm gonna finish my series on five steps to birthing a miracle, bringing forth a miracle in our life. But uh, how was your Christmas? Hope you had a great Christmas. You had a good day here yesterday, did church in the morning and then lazed around and ate too much food. But uh, had a good Christmas and uh, looking forward to a good week. I'm going to get lots of work done this week, setting up things for next year. <clears throat> and uh, I have services here at the weekend in Massachusetts and Connecticut. So join me if you can there. Boom. Hey, let me continue with this. I've been talking, uh, really in a way, taking the Christmas story and um, talking about how God can birth a miracle in our lives. And I really want you to, to uh, engage your heart for a few moments today with that idea. There are things God wants to bring forth into the earth. And um, there are, it, it's a bit like God puts us on a road and there are two ditches either side of that road. There is the, let's call it the Calvinist ditch, the idea that God controls and manipulates everything. And if God, well, if God wants to do something, he will do it. And if it doesn't get done, then it must be that God didn't want to do it. And... Um, the idea isn't really, it doesn't really stem forth from the Bible. It actually comes more from fatalism, from things like Islam. Isaiah, I think it's around about chapter 63, talks about the God of Mini, the God of numbers. Your number is up. And God is not like that. God is not um, a fatalist. And so you get Christians who kind of think, well, if God wants to bring forth something, he's going to do it. And then it seems that the other extreme, sometimes in the West, it's more as if, well, we can do this on our own. God's given us his word, his principles, and kind of said, get on with it, guys. And I think both of those are foolish and biblical and wrong. And I believe that the kind of the biblical worldview is God calls us to co-labor in him. God invites, we respond. God initiates, we um, reciprocate wouldn't be the word. He's God, we're not. But we say yes to his yes. I think God, literally, when he wanted a birth, um, his son into the world, I, I literally think he asked Mary's permission. Mary said, be it unto me according to your word. It wasn't like he dragged her kicking and screaming behind a bush kind of thing. And there are things God wants to bring forth into the world. And I believe he's looking for willing partners, uh, for people who'll say yes, for people who'll carry the purposes of God. And it's so important that we do that. We talked about five steps. The first one is everything begins with God's word. Everything begins, everything ends, but everything begins with God's word. Uh, number two, that when God speaks, we can't lean on our own understanding. We, when God speaks, it's not so we can figure out how to make it happen. When God speaks, it's not so we can form a committee and think, how can we produce this in our own strength? When God speaks to us, he's not always logical, but he's always wise. And he speaks to us to... Um, generate faith and expectancy in our hearts, not so we can figure him out intellectually. So number two is lean not on your own understanding. Number three was receive that word, receive it. Not in, in the sense of, oh, I guess if God said it, one day it will happen. That's hope. And hope is a wonderful thing. Hope is a biblical thing. But there's something altogether different when you literally, it's like, like in the spirit, you reach out and you receive that word and you take it in and you say, it's now done. How do you know it's done? I've got his word. Having God's word would be like having the tracking number from Amazon. It's not your job to get the package to your door. It's your job to click buy and then believe that Amazon is capable, which they generally are, of bringing the package to your door. God's never failed anybody. But our job is to receive his word as done and believe it's done. Not, not denying the circumstances, symptoms, problems, things around us. That's Christian science. That's foolishness. But simply to say, I know this is done based on God's word and based on God's word alone. That's a really powerful principle. Hey, I want to give you two last keys today. And... Um, Hmm. Key number four would simply be this, I will sum it up in the word patience, is that it's one thing to conceive the purposes of God, it's one thing to birth the promises of God, the purposes of God, but we need to carry the purposes of God. And for most of us, 
with most of the things God will call us to do, there's going to be a period where we walk and nobody else sees or believes or even supports the thing that God has said with us. And it's like that thing has got to grow and germinate on the inside of us. There's a real danger when we talk about the word patience, because in the West, we hear patience meaning, oh, I've just got to sit here waiting for something to happen. It will happen eventually, and my job is to wait. And biblically, patience is actually what a pregnant lady has. If somebody's pregnant, that is growing and developing and changing all the time. And when God speaks a word to us, it's not enough that we simply say, oh, well, God said it in his time and he'll bring it to pass. I'll just get on with life and watch reruns of Dallas or whatever on TV. Rather, that we engage our hearts with that thing and it's growing and living on the inside of us. And we're called to carry the purposes of God to full term. And as I mentioned in a previous lesson with Zachariah, I believe Zachariah's big mouth could have aborted, could have miscarried the purposes of God. And I think quite often we go through that period. All of us have probably had experiences where God said something to us and we, re we receive it with joy, hallelujah. And then after a few days, weeks and months, it's like we let go of that word and we, oh, well, why didn't it happen? You know, it's an interesting thing, but as a pastor, when somebody comes to me and says, well, I, I believe God, but it didn't work and why didn't it happen? What I'll sometimes try to sit down and gently suggest to them is what, what I am hearing is this. They began believing God and somewhere along the line they got discouraged and they stopped believing God. The writer to the Hebrews says, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward, but you have need of patience that you might inherit the promises. The Bible says, let us be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit promises. So I wanna follow people who have inherited promises through faith and through patience. So all of us are gonna walk through a period where we've got to hold on to that word and carry that word and incubate that word if we will. It's not our job to get the word to grow. It's not our job to get God's word to produce something in our life, yeah? People used to go to Smith Wigglesworth and said, how do you get great faith? And he'd always say, oh, it's easy. He'd quote a verse in Mark 4, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. And in that parable in Mark 4, Jesus said, the farmer sows a seed, and it says the seed springs up, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. And he says, the farmer knows not how. Most farmers, probably, especially traditionally, know very little about the process that uh, happens when you put a seed in the ground and the moisture you know, breaks down the outer husk and germinates the seed. And I, I don't, I'm not sure anybody completely understands, but they believe it. In no more than a <clears throat> pregnant lady understands what happens when she conceives a baby and how that brings forth. God has things he wants to birth on the earth today, and he's not looking for experts. He's looking for willing people. Zachariah was an expert and he nearly killed it, yeah? Mary wasn't an expert. She was willing, she was pure of heart. Be it unto me according to your word. And there's a time where we've got to, frankly, just get on with life, carry on doing what we're doing, walk through life, but believe and that what God has said will come to pass and that it's growing and germinating on the inside of us. You know, great, uh, a great way of doing that, and that's really key number five, is through praise, is through thanksgiving, is through meditation. If God's given me a word and I'm holding that on the inside of me, what Satan will do is tempt me. He'll come and he'll say, hath God said? He'll come and he'll say, it's not really working, is it? He'll come and he'll say, oh, just throw that overboard and let go of it. And one of the keys to birthing something is thanking God, is praising God, is rejoicing before the birth comes, if you will, before that, is knowing those things and not allowing yourself to get discouraged. And key number five, how do we know when it's time to birth something? How do you know when it's time for a baby to give birth? There are times when things, when something's ready, when the apple's ripe, it will fall off the tree. Yeah, when the baby's ready, it will come out. It's coming out. And uh, if God has said something to you, nothing in heaven or hell will stop it happening if you'll hold on to his word. And God's purposes will bring forth fruit on their own. Selah. Boom. Hope that's a help, guys. Um...
<laughs> have a really great day. I'm about to go for a coffee and do some work on this Monday morning. Been to the gym already. Uh, trying to recover after eating too much cheesecake yesterday. So, um, hey, I have a new uh, course and a new series I'm doing in the month of January on the spirit-filled life. And I really encourage you to check that out as well. And lots of new things happening. But I'm off. I need my coffee. So hit the subscribe button if you're here on YouTube. Check out the links below. And bye for now.